Hey viewers, we're doing another text adventure today. This one is called McMurphy's Mansion, sort of a uh, mystery themed. I don't know how the story goes yet, I haven't played it, but uh, I've got a walkthrough that I found on solutionarchive.com, so I'm going to run through it with the walkthrough and we'll do a narration like we did with, uh, with Cyborg. So, welcome to McMurphy's Mansion. For the official Durham, Scotland Register, just what is your first name anyway? Now, if we're going to go for a Scottish theme, uh, let's be called Dougal. And are ye a laddie or a lassie? Would you like to read the introduction to Murphy's Mansion? McMurphy's Mansion? Yes, we would love to. It was three weeks ago when you received the telegram that would change your life forever. You can even remember the exact wording. Come to Durham, Scotland immediately. Stop. Your great uncle has died. Stop. You may inherit fortune. Stop. We'll meet you at Durham Airport. Stop. Don't stop for side trips. Stop. Stop for nothing. Stop. Come now. Stop. Urgent. Stop. Please. Stop. Aaron McBee, Barrister. Well, it went something like that. Aaron McBee meets you at the Greater Durham Regional Airport and escorts you to the elongated black limousine waiting for you at the curbside. McBee has a very businesslike demeanour and seems unusually calm considering the amount of money that could be involved in your Uncle McMurphy's will. In a heavy Scottish, Scottish accent, which I'm not going to do, sorry, McBee tells you about your uncle and the conditions of his will. McBee begins, Your Uncle McMurphy was a most unusual man. His investments yield him, yielded him a great fortune and much time to devote to his passion for games of all types. It was his interest in these diversions that led to the conditions of his will. McMurphy felt that any heir worthy of inheriting his estate must prove that he is worthy. Beginning with only a small clue, you must find your fortune hidden somewhere on the mansion grounds. Because of his will, I can tell you no more. McBee tells you no more. Man of his word. A will? More like the last thrashings of a demented mind. It's a burn, dude. One thing about it, though. If you do succeed, no more work. Sleep till noon. Sounds good. Get serious now. Ten million dollars hangs in the balance. Now, that's a bit strange, because being that they're in Scotland, you'd think they were on the pound sterling. <clears throat> Perhaps the guy's computer who programmed this didn't have a pound symbol. As the limousine pulls into the lengthy tree-lined drive, you get your first look at McMurphy's mansion. The mansion is constructed of large grey stone blocks and appears to be of a truly antique vintage. It has had little, if any, remodelling and is in superb condition. The mansion is modest in nature, if any mansion can be described as such. The grounds are neatly manicured and nicely landscaped. The trees that line the cobblestone drive are trimmed round and are covered with berries. The rose bushes in the centre of the circular driveway are covered with thousands of perfectly formed bright crimson roses. This place could have starred in an old Sherlock Holmes movie. Okay, so the game has now started. Uh, the limo glides away and McBee leads you through the mansion and upstairs to your bedroom. You look around on your way to the second floor and are somewhat taken by the rich beauty of the furnishings in the mansion. Remember, all of this can be yours. Upon arriving in your bedroom, McBee hands you a small brass key, wishes you good luck and smiles at you knowingly as he leaves the room. Good luck, Dougal. Game McVersion 1.6. Very good. Okay, so this is standard text adventure where you've got uh, inventory using uh, command parser to give input to the game. Go here, get this, look at this, so on. So I've got to walk through the lookout so I know what to do, um, but I'll go through everything with you. So at the moment we've got a small brass key to start with. key is a bit tarnished. A beautiful antique dresser in the room.
and we pick up a box made of burl walnut and it's about the size of a cigar box. We'll unlock it with the key. The wee box falls open. So in the box, we get a gold bar, twenty four karat gold. We take a coin from the box. After removing the lint and chewing gum from the coin, you can examine it. The coin is an old silver Scottish coin. The date on the coin is 1923. Don't need the box anymore. Or the key. So again, I start moving around, we'll travel north. You are in the west end of the upstairs hallway. The hallway runs east and west, almost the entire length of McMurphy's mansion. I'm going to say make everything in a minute. A large hutch is close to you at the west end of the hall. Doorways lead to the south and to the north. You can see several more rooms on the second floor down the hall to the east. This was McMurphy's bedroom. The antique furniture here is splendid. The room contains a large canopy bed, a dresser, a huge hand-carved wardrobe, and a marble top table by the bed. A rendition of the McMurphy family emblem is hanging on the west wall. The windows are to the north and west. The drawer on the table is open. A diary is in the drawer. Dull, dull, dull. And boring people are going to have a boring diary. In the distance, you hear the hall clock slowly strike seven times. Bong, bong, I'm not going to do all the bongs. <laughs> You're at the top of the spiral stairway at the east end of the upstairs hall. The doorway is to the north, and another door is to the east of you. A plush stairway leads downwards into the foyer. Other rooms are to the west of you. This hall would make a nice runway for a small airplane. Okay. This is another of the several bedrooms in the mansion. The room is furnished in what seems to be the standard manner. Bed, dresser and wardrobe. Well, of course, you've got to have lots of things for the player to look in, haven't you? An old brass horn record player is on a table near the dresser. This room is decorated in many different pleasing shades of blue, and reminds you of a blue rainbow. Uh, yeah? Warm sunlight is shining through the windows to the south and east. A door is to the west of you. A breeze is blowing through the south window. Now the writer of this is doing a nice job of uh, setting the scene for everything. Very descriptive. Hope we don't find a monster under the bed. A gold bar. Another gold bar. There should be gold at the end of every rainbow, even a blue one. The gold bar has been added to your inventory. I'm sorry to tell you this, writer, but leprechauns putting pots of gold at rainbows are Irish and not Scottish. You're in the foyer at the north end of the entrance hallway. To the west is the living room, and to the east is the study. The front doors to the mansion are located down the entrance hall to the south. The carpeted spiral staircase begins here and rises to the hallway balcony above. Out the front door to the south you can see the beautiful plush rose garden. There is a hall clock here, similar to what we in the States call a grandfather clock. We in the States, hey? Not all of us are in the States. There is also a large mahogany table against the north wall. On the table are some strange looking curios. The clock is at least a century old. It has a small dial at the top that shows the faces of the moon, currently a full moon. The brass weights in the pendulum are visible through the etched glass in the door. The pendulum is swinging back and forth, to and fro, side to side, 
You are getting sleepy. The time is two o'clock. Done. Click the clock door opens. Clock is just a cleverly designed safe. It is cramped inside the clock. The weights and pendulum take up a lot of space, as does the clock mechanism. As you look up inside the clock, you see a slight shimmer of gold among the gears and pulleys. A gold bar seems to be stuck there, and we know what to do with those. Among the curios, there's a weird urn. The urn is actually an ancient looking oriental vase. The vase is coloured a deep blood red and is decorated with two fighting dragons. The dragons painted on the urn are bright gold. Another gold bar. Fantastic. I don't know how you're carrying around all these gold bars. Even with like a magic bag of holding, gold is pretty darn heavy. Alright, so we're moving on from here. You're in Uncle McMurphy's study. The enormous study takes up the entire east end of the mansion. The room is well lit to accommodate reading. Four large bookcases loaded with books are built into the north wall. They cover the entire north wall except for two windows. Along the east wall is a cabinet, a globe and two chairs with a small table. A piano and piano bench fill the southwest corner of the study. A breeze is blowing through the south window. No doubt all of those things are crammed full of gold. The books in the bookcases are very neatly arranged. As you examine the books, you notice that some of them seem to be missing. Cabinet is locked. We don't have a key at the moment, so we'll go on to something else. The globe is yellowed with age. The globe seems very old. The oceans and other features on the globe are labelled in an unusual style of lettering. Here be monsters. The globe is covered with crossed lines of latitude and longitude. You can see the continents of North and South America. The globe is resting in an ornate wooden base. I turn the globe and it spins and squeaks to a halt. You can now see the Atlantic Ocean, Europe and Africa. This part of the globe seems more worn than the rest and the surface is slightly bumpy. An unusual bump makes the outline of Scotland bulge slightly away from the old globe. You press the bump, thunk, you hear a noise under the globe. A small trapdoor in the bottom of the globe has opened and dropped a gold bar on the floor. This is turned into Scooby-Doo all of a sudden. This is the living room of the mansion. All of the furnishings are magnificent examples of times when craftsmen considered their products to be true works of art. The furniture near the centre of the room includes a sofa, a chair and a table. Several objects are on the table. A huge mirror hangs above the fireplace on the north wall. To the left of the fireplace is a door leading to the dining room. A large sculptured likeness of the McMurphy family emblem is on the west wall near the door that exits west to the grounds of the estate. A large painting is hanging on the south wall. The sofa is rather long and matches the chair sitting next to it. Matches are on the table. 
matches are always useful in adventure games. The McMurphy family emblem consists of a central shield with a lion on each side. The shield contains two crossed swords and a heart. Under the shield is a banner that reads Alrum Sub Est. Uh, gold is something. I don't know what sub means. Underneath. Gold is underneath me. That was easy enough. The banner that contained the Latin motto moved so that you can now see behind it. And there's some gold, I was right. How about that? Fancy there being a gold bar behind there. Okay, we'll look at the mirror next. Oop, too many R's. Mirror. The mirror is hung over the fireplace. Despite its obvious age, the large mirror gives you a beautiful reflection of the room and its furnishings. The entire room is reflected in the mirror. Especially noticeable is the painting of McMurphy hanging on the south wall directly across from the mirror. The painting before you is a portrait of the old man himself, Uncle McMurphy. He is dressed in full Scottish regalia, including a kilt made from the McMurphy clan tartan. He is a large man with a bright red beard. This portrait seems to have caught the true devious character of the man, complete down to the nasty gleam in his eye. I'm sensing some negative Scottish stereotypes here. Is he going to eat a haggis next? McMurphy is seated and is holding a Bible in his hand. The artist's signature is in the corner of the painting. What you thought was the signature of the artist is unreadable. However, you can make out a T and a U among the letters but they all have been painted on the canvas backwards. Because of the unusual nature of the lettering, you can read no more of what is written. Well, if there's mirror writing, let's look in the mirror. The letters in the corner of the painting can now be properly read. Turn the urn. Hey, that rhymes. As you turn the urn, you hear a strange sliding noise in the living room. This is the dining room. It is quite large and obviously has been used for formal dining and entertaining. The room contains a giant dining table, 14 dining chairs, a broad serving buffet, and a cavernous china cabinet filled with porcelain and silverware of every description. A crystal chandelier is hanging over your head. Both the north and west halls have huge windows complete with heavy burgundy velvet drapes. I don't think that's how you spell burgundy. That are held back with gold sash. The doorway to the south opens into the living room. There is another door to the east. We'll go through that door to the kitchen. This room contains food preparation equipment. A stove, a refrigerator and a chopping block. The pots and pans here are hung neatly by the sink. The kitchen has a small window near the door, north wall. The entrance to the dining room is to the west. One of the kitchen drawers is open. That's Chekhov's drawer. You see a candle in the drawer. It's a wax candle with a thick wick aimed west. Obviously a magnetic wick. So from the foyer we're going to go up the stairs. Now according to the guide we're dropping these things for later. This is the west lawn of the estate. An entrance to the mansion is east of you. This is truly a beautiful spring day.
The north and west stone walls come together here in the northwest corner of the estate. Over the wall to the west are the Scottish moors. You are outside what appears to be a workshop. Inside to the north you can see various tools and materials. You are inside the workshop now. Tools are neatly hung on the wall. Bits of wood and coloured plastic litter the floor, where someone has obviously been working. A pile of boards is against the west wall. If we examine the tools, you see a shovel here, and also a big hammer. Take everything that's not nailed down. make our way back into the mansion. The north window is now open. You're going to climb out it onto the edge, onto the ledge. You are out on the ledge. It is narrow and dangerous looking. Some of the stone has crumbled away to the east. Passage that way looks impossible. The ledge to the west seems stable. You have a nice view of the north section of the estate from here, but you are getting dizzy. You should probably not look down. The board fell across the gap. Easy does it. Crash! The board fell to the pa patio below. Oh, I said patio. You just made it across. You are on the ledge outside the locked room. Directly above you is a well-fed pigeon sitting by his nest looking at your head as though it was the bottom of a birdcage. Perhaps you should go on in. Don't look down. You have just entered what must have been McMurphy's favourite room in the mansion. This is his personal game room and hideaway. It is a large room and contains unusual paraphernalia of every description. There is a door to the south. A strange machine is against the east wall. Sitting in the middle of the room is a large round table. On the table is a small cube. The north window is open. The machine is standing near the east wall. The upper half of the strange machine is glass enclosed. Below the enclosure is a metal plate mounted on the wooden front of the machine. A royal purple curtain is hung around the inside of the glass case. There is an ancient looking electric cord laying on the floor. An outlet is nearby on the wall behind the machine. As you put the cord in the outlet, the curtain draws back, revealing a figure inside the glass case. The figure inside the glass case is a waist up version of a carnival fortune teller. She is dressed in bright clothing and is holding her hand over a crystal ball. seem to remember a great episode of The Twilight Zone where it was one of those animatronic fortune tellers that was telling the character's future and foretold their death or something like that. I'll have to look that up. The metal plate contains some unusual lettering in a small vertical slot. The lettering reads, Predict the weather. Astound your friends. Know your future. So the coin we've got with us from the start, you hear a small clunk as the coin falls down the slot. The fortune teller's hand waves slowly over the crystal ball. The lights on the machine blink and a small card appears in the slot. Clue 1, we found a clue. M-P-P-L-J-O-T-P-G-B, best wishes Uncle Mac. Gee, thanks, Uncle Mac. That's so helpful. Uh, according to the guide, the cipher they've used here is a dead boring uh, change the letter by one. If we go back one letter, that translates to look in sofa. I used to read a lot of those uh, choose your own adventure sort of puzzle books as a child where it would always be like, uh, solve the code before you turn the page, and so on. Alright, 
next we need to uh, look under table. You see a strange drawing on the other side of the table. The drawing is of a large ace of spades. In the lower right hand corner of the ace is a small shamrock. Again, I worry that they're getting the Irish and the Scottish confused. Okay, so we'll look in the sofa now after we've read that clue. Congratulations, you have solved clue one and found a coin. We spent a coin and we got a coin. Replacing each letter in the clue with the one before it in the alphabet broke the code. The coin you have found is now in your inventory. The fortune teller's hand waves slowly over the crystal ball. The lights on the machine blink and a small card appears in the slot. Clue number two. Best, jest, pest, vest, test, rest, west, fest, lest, zest. Blank, 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 blank. Having fun, Uncle Mac. I am having fun, Uncle Mac. This is a great game. So, uh, clue number two, according to the guide, the next word is nest. So we need to go back to the uh, ledge where there's a nest, but the nest is too far above us to look in it. So we're going to feel around in the nest. Among the feathers and mess in the nest, you feel something. It's a coin. You solve clue two. One of the only four letter words that ends in nest not on the list is nest. You have done well. The coin is now in your inventory. We're making a lot of progress all of a sudden. Uh, if we look in the nest again, which is not something I would ever think to do were I playing this on my own, there is a gold bar. Which I. Ha! Uh, the mistake text there. Sorry, lady, I don't know how to gold bar here. <laughs> Thank you, omnipresent Professor Oak. Gotta get, get. Get gold bar. Okay, back to the fortune teller. Clue number three, a recondite clue for my consanguineous parvenu. The perf is al fresco in the parterre sub ochorus carpels. Whew, Uncle Mac. So according to the guide, clue number three, you need a dictionary for this one. Okay, I, I know what some of those mean, but... Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't say all of them. Consanguineous. Sanguine means blood, something to do with blood. Uh, Alfresco is a pasta sauce, I think. And uh, no, that's Alfredo. Alfresco means fresh, all right? Uh, sub ochre, so I think that might be ochre as in, as in clay. I guess we'll find out if we keep going. You're on the front porch. The front door to the mansion is to the north of you. The drive curves around near the porch and runs south to the front gates. As you view the front lawn, you are impressed by the wonderful greenery and the landscaping. The groundskeeper should be especially commended for his work in the rose garden. Is he going to be called Groundskeeper Willie? I think this game might predate The Simpsons just. Uh, this is the northmost part of the drive, just off the front porch. The roses are directly south of here. The porch is to the north. Looking south down the lengthy drive, you can see all four of the unusual trees that line the drive.
if we look under the flowers nothing unusual here oh I need to go one more step to the south into the rose garden ouch I you've just rambled through the rose bushes to the center of the rose garden all around you are beautiful bright red roses beneath your feet in the center of the garden are planted small golden flowers they are planted to form some strange shape you have time to ponder your situation as you pull hundreds of stickers from the lower portion of your anatomy good heavens Okay, we'll look under these flowers. A coin. A good dictionary is always nice to have around. Clue three has been solved. You now have the coin. I wonder if maybe they meant a thesaurus, not a dictionary. Who cares? Ha! Ouch, these thorns hurt. Back to the game room. Same process as before. For our next clue. Clue number four. One, copper beryllium. Two, iodine, nitrogen. Three, tungsten, astatine, erbium. Four, boron, lutetium, einsteinium, minus sulfur. A wee bit tougher, Uncle Mac. Well, that's going to be periodic table. Uh, copper is Cu, beryllium is Be, that'll be cube. Iodine is I, nitrogen is N, that's in. Tungsten is W, acetine is a T obium Z R water uh, boron is B lutetium maybe L U Einsteinium uh, minus sulfur which is S in blue cube in water blue okay even though I feel like I might have translated that one I'm not sure exactly what I should do but I've got a guide here so that doesn't matter from your extensive travels as an adventurer you recognize this as a poker table <laughs> outlandish from the heart of the Orient there are no cards or chips here however okay so apparently there was a cube there which we'll take The small cube is one of those puzzles you have seen so many of back in the States. The coloured squares that make up the cube have been well scrambled. Okay, so it's a Rubik's Cube. I was worried it was going to be the one from Hellraiser. That would have made things a bit more interesting. Clive Barker presents McMurphy's Mansion. That'd be a hell of a puzzle to put in a text adventure. Have an actual Rubik's Cube, which you have to solve with directions. Turn top row, you know, 90 degrees clockwise, etc. Maybe I should write one. After playing with the cube, you have managed somehow to get one side all C. Okay. You don't play cube very well. The squares are mixed again. So we're just randomly scrambling it colors are all mixed again here we go thought the guide was trolling me for a second there after playing with the cube you have managed somehow to get one side all blue ah that's what the clue meant As you turn on the cranky old faucet, the sink slowly fills with water. The kitchen sink is now full of water. Oh, kerplop. The cube is now very wet thanks to you. Wait, something is happening. 
The little cube puzzle is beginning to fall apart. Looks like McMurphy's work again. He must have stayed very busy in that little workshop of his. As the cube falls apart into little squares of coloured plastic, you notice something in the sink. It's a coin you have solved clue for. By replacing each element in the clue with the abbreviation for that element, you broke another code and spelled out the clue. And the wet coin is now in your inventory. So back to the game room. I'm wary of mistyping a direction at some point because if I end up in the wrong room slightly, I'm not going to know how to get back following this guide. Master clue number one R38. You're almost there. Mac. Okay, we'll find out what that means later. Uh, we're digging in the rose garden. And the guide says, dig, dig. Deeper and deeper, the hole is much deeper now. Down in the dirt among the wee worms, you see a slight glimmer. A gold bar. All that digging paid off. The gold bar has been added to your inventory. Fantastic. Back through the rose garden. You are at the southmost portion of the cobblestone drive. The front entrance gates are here and appear to be well secured. The front of the mansion is visible some distance to the north. You are in the shade of a tree at the side of the drive. The middle gates that guard the front entrance are near here to the east as is the driveway. Okay, so we're in the shade of a tree, and we want to climb up the tree. You are sitting in the fork of a branch up the tree. The branches and leaves are very thick up here. All you can see are thousands of gold berries. Nestled just out of reach among the golden berries is a small gold bar. but we can't quite get it because it's out of reach. So we need to shake the tree. The leaves rustle slightly. A few bugs fall to the ground. The gold bar hesitates for a moment and then falls to the ground below. You're under a tree on the eastern side of the drive. The metal gates that guard the entrance to the estate are just west of you at the end of the drive. Southeast corner of the grounds, a large rock is here near the actual corner of the stone wall. The rock is apparently uh, large enough to warrant exclaiming it. Rockle. Among the bugs and dirt is a small piece of paper. Master clue number two, R61. So we had R38 and now we've got R61 as our second clue. You're on the circular drive. The rose garden is to the west of you in the centre of the drive. Above you is the arched roof of the front porch. The porch is north of you. The drive curves around to the northwest, also to the southwest. We'll keep on travelling back into the house. And we'll pick up all that gear that we dropped earlier. Oh, uh, Giselle, the French maid, has just come into the room. She's a little skinny, but worthy of your attention. Oh dear, has this just changed into a different genre of game? 
Giselle has long dark hair, big blue eyes, and is wearing a warm smile and a cute little maid's uniform. Oh dear, this is... Was this produced in Japan? She senses your friendliness and makes arrangements to see you later. Giselle excuses herself and leaves the room. Perhaps your luck is changing. That I did not expect. Uh, nothing interesting like that happens when we get the candle. Righto. Uh, we're examining a hutch that's in this room. It is larger even than the rock. Hutkia. <laughs> okay. Move the hutch. Okay. <laughs> You're at the base of a cramped stairway. The stairs go up into total darkness above. The hall and a hutch that has been moved are east of you. It is dusty and dimly lit here. Oh no, disaster. I'm going to have to retrace my steps because I was distracted by Giselle and didn't uh, actually get the... Uh, the matches. Let's go back east, east. There we go. Candle is lit. You are standing at the top of the stairs in a small storage area, too small to actually be called an attic. Some of the boards in the flooring are loose and creak loudly as you walk around. It is a good thing you have a light with you, otherwise you might fall and hurt yourself. Footprints in the dust lead to the east. There's someone else here. This is going to be old man Struthers pretending to be a ghost. Guarantee it. We'll follow the footprints. The room is even more cramped here, and the hot air is stifling and is a bit hard to breathe. On the floor, sitting at the end of the footprints, is an old trunk. A few rays of sunlight are shining through the small window to the north. Uh, but not enough to see by. Be glad you have your candle with you. The only way out is the way you came in. What's in the trunk? The old trunk is large and made of metal and wood. The trunk has wooden ribs on the top and sides. There is a large padlock on the front of the trunk. Uh, we don't have a key, I don't think. The lock is very rusty. We do have a hammer. Your candle just went out. Total darkness around you now. Can we, we had more than one match. We we'll light the candle. Hit padlock with hammer. It broke open. Who would have thought? The trunk contains a gold bar, a Bible, a book. Well, I thought the Bible was a book. I guess a Bible and also another book. Wow. It's a crappy candle. I don't know if there's a draft or something, but geez. Get Bovel. So we read the Bible. As you open the old Bible, it falls open to the first page. In fancy handwritten script, it reads, Presented to Dengas McMurphy and Deborah McDougall. I said I wasn't going to do the Scottish accent, but man, that was just way too tempting. On the occasion of their marriage, February 14th, 1919. Another notation lower on the page reads, Firstborn child, name, Aaron McMurphy, born March 11, 1923, place, Durham, Scotland. 
So we get the diary that we dropped earlier. And I guess we are uh, reading the entry from uh, Aaron McMurphy's birth. Boy, that's the most complicated parser command I think I've ever seen. Except Hugo 3. But we don't speak of that game. The ink in the diary is faded and hard to read on this page. But you are able to make some of it out. It reads, And the clan gathered today for my annual birthday celebration. On down the page is another readable passage. Presented with this wonderful diary, it and the secrets it holds will be kept in my special hiding place under the board. So we're moving the boards in the storage room. Ugh. The board finally came loose enough to look under. Well, McMurphy did have a good hiding place. There is a gold bar under the loose board. It is a little dusty, but 24k is 24k, dusty or not. Okay, so uh, apparently according to the guide, we need to wait for McB to appear and give us the, the third clue. So I'm not sure exactly how to uh, bring that about, so I'm just going to walk around for a bit because it might be... don't have the matches I've broken the game okay I'm gonna have to pause here and I'll get back to where I was and uh, we'll see if we can go from there okay I've got us back to where I think we need to go back to um, McB supposedly appears and gives you master clue number three which is that L equals seven uh, so what that gives us is the combination to the safe when we turn the urn before that reveals a safe and that is the next step in the guide after that so hopefully this works and the game doesn't require you to have fulfilled all the other conditions because I've just gone straight to this click That's a bit confusing that uh, the clues are given, you to, given to you in an order other than that which you input them. But I suppose if you've ever opened a safe, you'll know that it goes one direction, then the other, and then back again. Okay, that doesn't seem to have opened. Uh, doesn't seem to have opened the safe. Let me just make sure that I've got it correct. Right to thirty-eight. Left to seven. Right to sixty-one. Okay, well, um, it looks like I'll just have to uh, spoiler for you what happens in the end, because uh, I seem to have busted the game. So, according to the guide here, uh, when you look in the safe, the safe is empty. Uh, McBee appears, who pulls off a wig, 
and you realize he really is your Uncle McMurphy. He hands you the fortune and the mansion keys and welcomes you to the McMurphy clan. And remember now, no more work, sleep till noon. You have done very well. Congratulations. So it was a Scooby-Doo ending after all. Uh, sorry I couldn't uh, show it to you, but it's nice that we can find out what happens in the end anyway. Uh, that'll teach me to uh, uh, not think about uh, what I'm doing here. But also it's a bit weird that uh, the guy didn't show up when he was supposed to to hand me the clue. Anyway, if you've made it this far, uh, thanks for uh, watching slash listening. Um, please subscribe if you like the videos. I'll be making some more soon. Um, see you next time.